Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create a concept cloud in Notion, or in other words, a tag wall, or in other words, a master database. To do this, I'm going to give a sort of skeletal version of an average sort of Notion dashboard with a bunch of databases that I will also go through. And I'm going to connect those databases to a master database through tags. So let's start looking at it. This is similar to my Notion dashboard and is probably especially useful for content creators or students or a combination of both. So first is input. This is where I have my quick notes, my daily documents, and things I'm seeking to learn. Or for a student, it may be lecture notes. In here, I have my Web Clipper database that collects all of my web clippings from Notion's Web Clipper extension for Chrome. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down below. I also have my bookshelf, which is also linked down here. And it's just a collection of all the books that I am currently reading or going to read. Going down, I have my to-do, which is just a link database from my content calendar, which is under output. Output is everything I'm putting out into the world. Input is everything that's kind of staying within my system. I have a status property inside of this content calendar that shows me if I have an article that is on deck, if I have an article that I'm writing, currently reviewing, or published, it'll all show up in my pipeline. Everything from quick notes down to bookshelf is going to go into this concept wall. I could also include stuff in my content calendar, but for this example, everything from Quick Notes to Bookshelf is going to be connected by tags. Let's start with Quick Notes. So Quick Notes is the page I'm entering whenever I'm using Notion on my phone. So whenever I'm out and about, I will bring up the Notion app into this page and create a card for whatever I want to quickly jot down. An example would be a grocery list. I would tag it under something like things to remember. Something else might be uh, notes from a podcast I'm listening to, a conversation that I'm having, or a general brain dump that has no discernible place in my dashboard. Let's say I'm listening to a podcast about personal finance. I'm gonna tag it under podcast notes, and I'm gonna add a concept property and relate it to that concept database in the dashboard. And I believe I called it concepts slash tags. Here, I'm gonna create a concept called money. Now, if we go back over to concepts and tags, you can see personal finance comes up and a new tag called money appears. Up here, it's gonna say related to Quick Notes. Let's just rename that just to Quick Notes. Let's go back and down to Daily Documents. I usually use Daily Documents um, primarily for free writing sessions. So upon each day, I'll usually do this once to twice a day. I'll click on a card and go to one of two of my templates here one is called light mode, the other is dark mode. If I'm feeling like I want to write in light mode, I will click this and a Pomodoro timer will actually appear. And this is just a little widget that I included. I'll also provide a link to this down below. And it gives me kind of a light theme version of this timer. You can start it, stop it, reset it. Now let's say I want to write in dark mode. Click dark mode, and this Pomodoro timer will appear, and it's a bit more aesthetically pleasing in dark mode, as you can see. Let's go back to light mode, delete that. I also have a property to count my words, and if you want to find your word count in a given document, these are words, click these uh, three dots up here. Scroll all the way down, you'll see word count and the number of words you've written right here. Let's also create a concept property 
related to that wall. Again, concept and tags. And let's say this one is about productivity. Now let's go into study. Let's say you're a student and you want to create notes based off of lectures or lessons. I think board view is pretty good for this if you have a lot of different classes. For instance, you can put inside a select property different subjects, subject one, two, and three, and it'll show up across here. And for each card, make it a lesson or a lecture. Other properties I have are class date, semester, quarter, instructor, and grade. And in grade, if you put in a number, it will automatically come out as a percentage. And to do that, click this little one, two, three button here, and you can pick an option. Also create a concept property in here. And maybe we can call this one science. Now, if we go back to the concepts table, you'll see that we're starting to create a master database. This one is related to our daily documents. So let's just rename this. And let's rename this to study. Okay, so things are starting to populate by concept. And of course, if there's more than one note inside the same concept, it will populate down in the same cell in a list format. We were gonna go into Web Clipper, which is, like I said before, where I keep all of my web clippings. I am going to also connect this to my concept cloud. So how you use this Web Clipper is essentially, once you download it, it'll show up in your Chrome toolbar and when you have an article that you want to save, you can go up to the button here. What will probably show up is the title of the article and possibly even the publisher's name. You can modify this title, keep it the same, add to it. Make sure your database is in add to. You can search for your database up in the search bar. I'm going to search for Web Clipper and save page. Now it has shown up in our database. So what's here is date created. So the date I put it in, the name of the article, the link to the article, and I have to manually put in my tags. So I'm going to put in article. So some examples that you can use Web Clipper for is clipping articles, journals, recipes, music sheets, wish lists, stuff you want to purchase in the future, tutorials, news articles, videos, music, you know, anything you find of interest on the web. I also have this property to tell me if I've consumed it or I have not. And that is just a checkbox. I also create separate views. One view is to consume, one is consumed. So in order to make sure these views are populated correctly, we're gonna use filter. And we're gonna say consumed is not clicked in to consume. And in consumed, consumed is clicked. So if I were to click, it would disappear in this view and show up in this one. Also, some of these articles actually populate the body of the article as well. So if you were to open it, you may be able to find the cover image and the body of the article, which is pretty cool, but that's not the case for everything. Now let's look at the bookshelf. So this bookshelf is self-explanatory. It's all the books I'm reading or I'm going to read. These aren't the actual books in my bookshelf, but I just put this up here for an example. We have a view for identifying books by their covers. We also have another one that is just straight up a list and another one that is a genre view. So quickly going through this, each book has a few properties. Up here is progress and that's taking the length of the book. This book has 336 pages. And if I were to type in here, I have read 78. 
it looks like I'm about 30% of the way done this book. If I were to say 336, it would have a finished flag. 100, maybe 170 would be a little bit more. You get the point. I also have general tags here. I have the author from last name to first name. I have the URL and I have a description of the book, the date published, the difficulty. Now difficulty is a formula. And what this is uh, grabbing is actually the length of the book. So for me, I have anything less than 180 pages is a quick read. Anything less than 360 pages is an ideal read. And anything between 360 and like 1200 pages would be a lengthy read. I also have genres, general setting, and a custom ID. My custom ID is set up to slice the author's name, the tags, the name of the book, and the year it was published. So as well, let's create a concept property and connect it to our cloud. I might just call this one narrative. Try to keep it pretty general for this example come back into concepts and see this populate. So let's just call this bookshelf and everything's starting to come together. So this is really nice because sort of the traditional way of tagging in Notion is tagging with a select property or tagging with a multi-select property that is isolated within its own database. This allows for multiple databases to share similar tags and have a place to view all of these pages in completely separate databases that may have nothing to do with each other but share a common concept. Now really quickly, let's go into this output. I just wanna go over this really quickly in case you are interested in copying this template. So content calendar, I actually wrote a whole article on this a while back, and I'll provide a link to that down below if you want further explanation, but I'm just gonna go through all the properties here. So what you're gonna use content calendar for is to plan out all the content you're gonna write. So for example, it looks like here, I wanna create a brownie recipe that's due on the 22nd. If I click on it, I'll have my due date up here, the 22nd. I'll have some tags. I'll have a status and status progress, time progress, socials promo, socials hashtag, a link to the published material, web tags, web category, and a short description. So all of these properties will sort of help you organize online content. Now for this time progress bar, I'll show you how this works. So the 22nd is representing the due date. Today is the 17th, the day I'm filming. Let's say that the due date is on the 18th. Now my progress says get it done because it is tomorrow. If it were today, it will also say get it done. If it were yesterday, it will say past due. Now, if it were the 22nd, it'll give me three little notches. The closer I get, to today, the more progress goes up. It's not so much a progress bar than a warning bar to see how close I am getting to the due date. Now, if I'm more than a week away from the due date, it will say due in a while. So you can't really make a master database in Notion in the traditional way you'd think. You can't really just merge them all into one database. I mean, you technically could, but it would be a little bit messy and overwhelming. There would be so many properties, um, but I'm sure you could figure that out. I just think this is the best way to very quickly get everything together without kind of making a mess of everything. So I hope this helped. Again, I will have every single link I mentioned down below, including this template. And if you have any questions, 
about this, let me know. And I will see you guys next time.